Hi guys, it's Elisa at Moat Cottage and today we're making kombucha. Kombucha is a fizzy drink that is drunk cold and it has fruits in it to give it different flavours, if you choose. It's made with a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, which is called the SCOBY for short. And a SCOBY is this. And this is alive and it eats the sugars out of the tea and sugar that you add to it. So what we've got here is a vessel and it's got two cups of the starter liquid, which is kombucha that we've just made. In a separate jug, we're going to add three tablespoons of organic black tea. And three quarters of a cup of white cane sugar with four cups of boiling water. And give that a mix in. That will dissolve the sugar and will steep the tea for about 10 minutes. The organic black tea that I use is English breakfast and I quite like that. It comes up really well in my brews of kombucha. But you can try whatever organic black tea you like. And the reason we use organic black tea is because we don't want any chemicals in it because it's a live drink. Kombucha is quite good for your tummy as well. Look, I find it's really good for settling my tummy. I have a lot of issues with my chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and I find this drink really helps me a lot. Back over at our kombucha vessel, we're going to add eight cups of water. It's room temperature. And it's filtered water. You don't want to be using water straight from the tap. Same as with the tea and washing your hands. We don't want chemicals in this mix because it's a live drink. All right, that's six cups in there. And what I'm going to do is add the other two cups into the boiling water because that's been brewing for 10 minutes now. And I want to cool it down because you can't add the tea mixture into your kombucha starter mix until it's a certain temperature and that is between 18 degrees Celsius and 32 degrees Celsius, or 65 degrees to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll put the two cups in here. And then we'll check the temperature to make sure it's within range, and it's not, so we're going to let it cool down until it's ready to go in to the starter mix. I'm straining the tea mix into our kombucha starter mix, making sure I don't get any of those tea leaves in. I'll give that a stir. We just get one scoby out and place it in the vessel. Then I'll add some cheesecloth to keep any bugs out and secure it with an elastic band. I'll now place this out of direct sunlight in a place that's not going to get disturbed, which for me is the mantelpiece which in winter is really good because it's a stable temperature in that room. My Scobie Hotel I also keep out of direct sunlight and unfortunately it doesn't fit in the pantry where it's nice and dark. However, I do store it behind me, which you've probably seen in some of my other videos. I'll start checking this in 12 days. Usually I can tell when I walk past and I smell it. I can just tell that it's ready and I'll get back to you when it's ready to bottle up. We're back and this has been brewing for 16 days and I can really smell it now and I believe it's ready. I start checking it after 12 days and I just have a little taste test each day so that when it's not so sugary and not too vinegary, then I know it's ready to bottle up. In winter when the heat is on or in summer when the temperature of the house is quite warm because we don't have air conditioning here, it takes about 12 days. In the spring and the autumn or the fall, if you call it fall, it takes longer because the house is quite variable in temperature and so it just seems to take longer because the house is probably cooler at night. So if you just continue to check it after 12 days and then you'll get it to where you think it's right. And I know that can be a bit tricky when you're starting out because you don't know exactly what it's meant to taste like, but you'll do trial and error and you'll, you'll find that sweet spot of where you like it. So I just take off the cheesecloth and I've got clean hands, but they're not soapy or antibiotic poisoned or anything like that. So because the scoby's alive, we don't want to handle it with antibiotic 
I don't know, there's these antibiotic things you put on your hands to stop germs and stuff. You don't want to be killing this. So you don't want any of those creams and sprays on your hand. I don't even know what they are. So anyway, I've got clean hands, but they're not, they're not soapy or anything like that. So this is my SCOBY hotel. So this is where I put my SCOBYs when I have extra SCOBYs, because when you pull out your SCOBYs, you'll have a new one. And you'll have the original one. So they do multiply. So you need some of your extra scobies. So if a batch goes wrong, which I've never had, but if a batch went wrong, then you would have your backup scobies. And if somebody else wants a scoby that, you know, when they send their shout out, who's got a scoby, you'll have a spare scoby for them. And it's always a good idea to share your scobies around because if, if for some horrid reason you lost all your scobies, you will have someone that you can get one off. I find it easier to pour my kombucha liquid into a jug still messy that's why I've got the tea towels down. I like to add a little bit of liquid to my SCOBY hotel each time I make a new batch so that it's got a fresh bit of goodness in there. You don't want it to dry out and it sort of needs the sugars and everything to stay alive. These are my kombucha bottles and they have a secure lid on them because when you're doing a second ferment they can build up pressure because they get carbonated it gets bubbles in it so if you leave it too long in the second ferment it, and you open it it can fizz out like champagne so you try not to let it go too long on your second ferment so what we'll do is we add some fruit juice to this I've used raspberry juice with the seeds strained out which is delicious and I've used pear juice apple juice today we're using freshly squeezed apple juice and so I just pour some apple juice into the bottom of my bottles the kombucha will feed off the sugar in the apple juice and that's how it gets carbonated while it's doing its second ferment I usually fill the bottles up with three quarters of a cup to a cup of the fruit juice which is about a third of the bottle the rest is the kombucha Before we use all the kombucha, we need for the next batch, two cups of liquid, which we call kombucha starter. And that will make the next batch. The bottles were rinsed out thoroughly with water so that there was no residue of soap. Next, all we do is seal the lids and we leave them in a dark place for between three days and a week, depending on the temperature. And then when you think they're ready, you put them in the fridge and you leave them in the fridge to get cold before you open them because that helps to contain the bubbles in the bottle instead of it all shooting out. If you open them warm, there's more chance of them shooting out and making a big mess. Another trick is when I open them, if I think they're going to be fizzy, I can sort of tell now when I think they're going to be too fizzy from experience, but I just put a bag over the top. I just place the kombucha bottle in a bowl and I open the bottle in the bag and all the liquid will go down, run down the bottle and go into the bowl and there you're not wasting it. You can still use that. We're back and the second ferment is done. I'm pretty sure it's ready. I've had it in the fridge for a few hours to chill and I'm ready to open it and see if it's ready. I'm going to put it in the bowl just in case it does explode, like I talked about earlier. I have a Ziploc bag to cover it. And I'll... There we go, not too bad. There's a bit of pressure, which is good. That's exactly what you want. Now well, let's see. Perfect. That's got some fizz in it, nicely carbonated. Now let's have the taste test. 
it's delicious. Some people say it's like iced tea and other people say it's more like a carbonated cordial. I don't really like either and I think it's more like a cider. But I guess it depends how you make it because you can make it more vinegary or more sugary depending when you bottle it up. Some people drink it after the first ferment when it's flat and they haven't got any fruit juices added to it. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm, I'm, you know, it's drinkable, but it's not a great drink. However, once you've done the second ferment, it's, it, it gives it life. It gives it bubbles, it gives it flavor, and I really enjoy it. And, it's, and you're making it yourself. It's free, basically free. Starting out making kombucha can be a little bit overwhelming. It seems to be a big process and you do need things like the bottles and vessels to put your kombucha in and obviously you need your scoby. But once you get going, it hardly costs any money at all. It's basically just the tea and sugar that you're paying for. Especially if you grow your own fruit for the juices, then you're not paying for juice. You can use store-bought juices, but try and get as natural as possible. If I open a kombucha bottle and it's not quite fizzy enough, I just seal it back up and put it back on the shelf for another day or two, and then put it back in the fridge, chill it, and then open it up and see how it is then. So you can always do a test bottle if you're not sure and you wanna try one earlier by putting it in the fridge, opening it up, seeing where it's at. You try not to do it, you know, we don't open every bottle up or anything like that because you don't wanna let the bubbles out that is already there. I'm pretty sure that some of you already make kombucha. There's so many clever people who watch this channel and do some really cool stuff. Let me know in the comments below what your flavors are that you like to make. And if you've never made it before and you have an interest in it, give it a go. It's a lot easier than you think it will be once you get going. Some other flavors I like to do are pineapple as well as orange juice. And you could also add in a little bit of ginger if you wanted to your juice to give it a little bit of a gingery flavor if you like that sort of thing. There are so many options and it really depends what's in season and what you grow and what you have that you can try to juice for the kombucha. And of course you can mix and match flavors as well. And if you have any questions, leave them below as well and I'll try and answer them. I've tried to put everything in this video, but when you do something, you sometimes don't Think to add it in you just do it and you're not even thinking that you do it so if I've missed something let me know and either myself or somebody else in the community will answer the comments there's so many clever people in this community and you guys are all so supportive of each other helping each other with different questions so thank you very much for that I really appreciate it and I thank you for watching see you next time